Papa Sammy and Adderberg here. I, I did that video yesterday on Burma, uh, biochar. Well, there seems to still be some confusion, and I'm getting a lot of feedback. But I don't understand. I'm not quite sure, etc. So I'm gonna try to make it a show and tell as simple as possible. I think a lot of the problem was Darkish Forms said their biochar pit is commercial. When they make biochar, they making biochar. They're not playing. They making bunches of it. All right. To start with. Biochar will improve your soil's health. Healthy soil, a, a good healthy soil, one teaspoon has more microbes and fungi than all the living people in the world. So that's what that, that's what we're talking about when we sell biochar. Now biochar is a very porous high carbon form of charcoal. Now, I'm getting people telling me, well, I just buy charcoal and, and uh, ch charge it. And when they say charge it, that means soak it in, in some kind of a nutriment, a uh, fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, whatever. Then they put it in their garden. I use vermiculture. I have a worm kit bed. Now, here's the thing, people. Before I get too deep into biochar, let me explain something. Biochar is negative charge. Your nutrients in your garden are almost totally positive charge. You put biochar in your garden without charging it with a uh, fertilized, it's going to suck nutrients. It's going to pull it to them. The first year, they'll be pulling nutrients out of the soil into the biochar. And that's not real good. So you need to charge it for at least two months. Cut one ounce of biochar, it'd be the equivalent of covering a half acre of land. That's how many little holes and, ch and channels is in it, microscopic. And when you charge it, those little holes and channels soak up all your liquid fertilizer. You put it in your garden, turn it in. What happens in? It starts to work properly. It starts to work like it's designed to work. Okay. Now, having said that, let me see my notes. Oh, also, when you put biochar in your garden, it's extremely high carbon. When you put it in the garden and cut it in, it's there permanent. It's going to stay there because it's almost pure carbon. When you do that, you're saving tons of carbon dioxide going back into the air because you're containing it in your garden where it can be used. So, now let's start. It's Two or three ways you can charge your biochar. You can mix a liquid fertilizer, put your biochar in a container, pour the liquid in, let it soak for three or four, five, six weeks, whatever. I like to use my Burma compost. I'll mix it up with water, get it good and damp, and I mix it up real good and let it sit for months, three or four months. That way, I've got all that fungi from the bio, my permaculture, and it's in it's in the biochar now. So now, once you get all that prepared and ready to go, oh, another way, you can take it and put it in a wheelbarrow or something and powder it. And once you powder it into a powder form, you can throw it in your chicken pen. The chickens will be scratching and eating and putting the manure in, and you throw in grass in there for them to nibble on or whatever, that is be a, a tremendous charge by a car because it'll have all kind of good stuff in it when you put it in your garden. Now, biochar, like I said, 
is a very pure, high carbon form of charcoal. A lot of people say, well, I put, take charcoal, put it in my garden. Fine. But now when you say automobile, and you think, well, Ford, Chrysler, uh, Chevrolet, Oldsmobile. Yeah, they're all cars. Charcoal and Burma culture are all high carbon, but they're not the same thing, people. Fire car is made with a very, very, very low oxygen content. And the best way to make it, the easiest way to make it, is get you a metal container. I mean, whatever size you want. This big, this big, a 55-gallon drum, it don't matter. You take your dried wood. It can be anything that's not treated with a chemical. or it, it, I'm talking about your old tomato plants or your old corn stalks, horse manure, cow manure. All that can be made into uh, biochar, every bit of it. What you do is, it, let's just keep it simple. We're going to use wood. You take your wood and you want little pieces of wood. You don't want logs. Simple reason being. A big log, it'll char the outside and the inside won't move. You don't want charred wood. You want burnt, uh, bio char. So you cut it down. Take small sticks, chop them in lengths, get it all that done. Pack your container as tight as you can. Okay? Then you put a top on the container. A tight top. Cut a little hole, maybe an inch and a half in the top. Okay, you take your metal container over to your fire pit and you build your fire, set the container down in it. Over a period of time, you're going to see smoke starting to come out that hole, vapor. What it's doing is burning all the water vapor, the uh, all the minerals and stuff is coming out of that wood. It's coming out through that smoke hole. So after a while, the smoke's going to come out really fast. And then, then after a while, hour, two hours, whatever, depends on your heat and the size, you're going to see a vapor coming out and it's going to catch on fire. And it's going to sound like a jet engine. Because then it's starting to release gas, the wood. The fire underneath it ignites that gas, and it'll just be like a flamethrower. Let it flame. After a while, you'll see it die down to just a little fire, a little, a little bitty fire coming out. That's good. Leave it alone. Keep adding your wood. Keep your fire going. Eventually, the flame will die out, and you'll see a little whisp of smoke or a little every once in a while. That means your charcoal is ready. Your, burn, your pile char is ready. Take it off the fire, let it cool down. Once it's cool, take your top off the container. You can store it in plastic bins, but listen to me. Don't put that hot biochar in a plastic bin and store it in your garage because it might catch that bin on fire and you'll wind up buying a new house. But uh, put it in, let it cool. You can put it in a plastic bin. Then mix your vermal culture, your fertilized, whatever. Mix it in there. Get it ready. Let it sit two or three months. Now, when it comes time to put it in your garden, you go out there with, with a shovel and just kind of sprinkle it. Spray it. Throw it. Then you take your, your broad fork and just stick it and turn it. Kind of work. You don't have to dig up. You don't have to cut it into the ground. Just kind of mix it. All right, now you've got it where it needs to be. Instead of pulling nutrients out of your garden, it's going to start releasing. And over a period of time, it, it, it'll make a, a, a difference like you won't believe. Now, I've tried to explain this the easiest way I know how. It's not hard to do. You can actually dig a hole in the ground. Two foot deep, yay big around. Start your light fire on the bottom, pine straw, whatever. Start your little bitty fire. Add little sticks. As it burns up, keep laying bigger sticks. 
in diameter on top. Lay them flat. You don't want them TP style. Lay them flat and build them on up all the way to the top of your hole. All right? And let it simmer. Let it burn. Pretty soon, after a while, and, it, and that takes practice, take your hose pipe and soak it down. You will have some biochar. But anybody that's burnt trash before or limbs out in the opening, when the air can get to it, when they finish burning, you got a big old handful of white powder. That'll work in your garden, it helps. But it, it damn gum sure is not biochar. And there's numerous ways to do it, people. It's not rocket science. Uh, you can take charcoal and soak it, but I, I don't like the idea. You're not sure what chemicals is in it, and that's what you're putting in your garden. Now, if you make your charcoal and charge it, you know what you got. And that's why I, I tend to stay with the biochar. It's, I don't know how else to explain it, but I'm sure my subscribers will tell me what I missed. Now this is well-made biochar. One ounce of that stuff right there is the equivalent of a half acre of land. There's so many holes and passageways through one ounce of that stuff. It, it, it's a miracle worker. Now, you can't put this in your garden unless you charge it because this has a negative charge. When it goes in your garden, your microbes and stuff have a positive charge. And this will actually suck the nutrients out of your garden into itself. Then over a period of two or three years, it'll start releasing it back. So you always want to charge biochar before you put it in your garden. Take a shovel, spread it out around your plants. And when you get it spread out around your plants, turn it in with a fork and That'll be in your garden for years and years oh, to come. Sure. has three physical qualities that helps your soil. One of them is the microscopic pores in, in it. It absorbs all your, once it absorbs, you, once you charge it and get it full of your minerals and fertilizer and stuff, it releases it for years. Cut your wood in smaller pieces like, like this. And make sure it's dry. When you cut it in smaller pieces, the uh, pores are open, closer, smaller, and the whole wood turns to charcoal. You want charcoal, not charcoal. Now that the wood is chopped into small pieces, you want to stuff it into your metal container. Also, you would like to put a hole in the top of the container. That way, you can let the fumes escape. 